Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming, a sub you may on blast. Some of you know me on Twitter, the gaming dragon today. I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Mice T. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> oh my girlfriend's in the room. Sorry, she kind of forced the issue, and we can make it so it's just part of our game, can't we, my little pet? He doesn't want to admit I'm right. <laughs> I guess. You really think she'll be able to translate it? Oh definitely, she's a wizard languages. I bet she could figure it out even if she didn't know the writing system. I sure hope so. Well, wanna pack up for home? Yeah, let's. The walk back to Gavin's apartment is a little colder than last night. He holds his hand over his breast pocket to shield me from the wind and provide a little more heat. By the time we arrive back at his place, I'm a little more grateful for my coat of fur. You are okay in there? Yeah, thanks for your help. <laughs> my pleasure, mistress. He said it mostly to keep from me from correcting him, but I appreciate it nonetheless. So you wanna... So you think you wanna try meditating again tonight? He thought you might be a little less distracted after last night. Maybe I would have been... Maybe I would have before Julie showed up, but now that she has the box, I'm not gonna be doing anything until she translates it. Like he said, there might be some steps that come before then that we're missing, and I don't want to take the chance of, m of making things worse. Sounds good. Want dinner or anything? Maybe in a bit. Guess you're probably all TV'd out of chilling under the counter all day. You could say that. Yeah, sorry, I'm not sure what I not sure what I would have what I have not sure what I would have for you to do then. I think you know exactly what we're going to do. He's either caught off guard or pretends to be. Oh, uh, uh you you sure? Those weren't just idle threats, Gavin. When I said I wanted to see you at the size, I meant it. Or do you not think your mistress is a woman of her word? Uh, oh, uh, of course you are. This might be our last night like this, you know. It would be a waste not to take advantage. Gavin's still having trouble playing hard to get. Well, we can do something if you really want. Right answer. Carry me to bed. Yes, mistress. He sets his hand down and I hop on. Oh, God. Uh, let's skip it. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for the... Save the juicy parts for, uh... Other, other times. Uh, yeah. I don't want, I don't want to get slapped down again. All right. Margaret Sands and Chess makes clear her dominant role in their relationship. Oh, God. Alright. Jeez. Well, that was, uh... Oof. Yeah. Damn. Day five. And this together. <sighs> With a final heave, I tip the slice of bread over and it drops onto the toaster. Phew! Man, that was like trying to move a futon around. I depress the lever on the toaster to, fi to fire it up. The coils click and a warm orange glow emanates from the top of the appliance. The heat is intense enough that I have to take a step back. Hopefully he keeps the dial where he likes it. It's set to medium anyway, so it can't be too far away from how he prefers his toast. Just then, Gavin sticks his head out from the hallway. He turns it back and forth in a panic before he sees me on the kitchen counter. Jesus, there you are! I woke up and you weren't on the pillow. I thought I lost you. Nope, I was just making you some breakfast. I pick up a tea bag and hold it against my chest like it's a sack of flour. I slip it over to the teacup that's already sitting under the spigot of his counter of his countertop water boiler. I haven't had the chance to s haven't had the chance since we started dating. I always enjoy you doing it. Boyfriends love that kind of crap. I have to hop up on an overturned mug to press the dispense button. Once the teacup is filled with enough to the precisely heated water, I jump back down. Second, y'all, water time. Hmm. Alrighty, back to it. Oh, uh, I don't think that's necessary. Seems to be a hassle like this. It's kind of fun to challenge, actually. Not that I'm able to do it. Not that I'm able to do a lot. With everything stuck in the fridge, you're gonna have to make do with just plain butter on toast and tea. The toaster dings and the slice pops up. Oh, that was quicker than I thought. The surface cools down quickly, but I'm still grateful for the dress and my fur to insulate me from the heat. You were such a good boy last night. I thought you deserved a reward. I grab the corner of the slice of of the slice and tug at it like I'm trying to dislodge an awkwardly placed box from inside of a moving truck. I know I'm pushing hard and being a little mean during our session, so I wanted to be extra nice to you for this nice to you for this morning. The toast is just light enough for me to pull it out, and I let it drop on the plate I'd set out. Of course, I mean, of course you're into it, but you're supposed to treat your subs to some affection afterwards. Aftercare. Very important, y'all. I pick up the knife I'd salvaged from the drying rack and set it on top of the stick of butter in the butter dish. That's what I've read about this kind of thing anyway. The butter is softer than I expect, and I slice off a pat with ease. Slice, and I slice a pat off with ease. You read about this somewhere before? I spread the butter on the toast. Oh, you know how you end up stumbling across stuff like that? You might as well read it in case it ever comes in handy. 
The action of spreading the butter is somewhat, ana somewhat analogous to sweeping, if more awkward. Anything I'm doing is extra credit, though, so I make sure I don't spread it out, out of the corners. There you go. Bon appetit. It can't be any fancier than what he eats for breakfast normally, so I had to make so I had to bank on the novelty of it being made by a cute mouse lady instead. He removes the tea bag from the teacup and blows on the tea surface before taking a sip. Good choice of tea. Good good selection for me to choose from. He takes the plate and uses it to catch any crumbs that result from biting into his toast. There are a few seconds of chewing as he takes the time to consider its taste. It's good, thanks. I presume he means it tastes good the same way that toast generally tastes good. You're welcome. I'm glad I got the chance to make it for you. He takes another bite and washes it down with tea. So, feeling good this morning? Yep. Got a good night's sleep. Had some good sex last night, and Jilly will probably figure out the tea by the end of the end of the day. I might be back to normal by this evening. A at least I might be on the my way back to normal. Or maybe not, in which case... Gavin looks concerned. In which case what? In which case, it might be worth practicing how to make breakfast like this. I see Gavin about to say something. I'm not being fatal. I'm not being fatalistic or anything. I still hope there's some way to turn back, and I feel good there. I feel there's a good chance I can. But I don't know. As soon as Julie said that she could translate the box and looked like it had a better chance of returning to normal, the idea of staying like this seemed less of a life sentence. Like right now, it seems like one of two possibilities and not a destined fate, you know. And with that in mind, I feel a lot more equipped to deal with it. Are you sure? Yeah, like I'm looking forward to being my old self, but also kind of contemplating my life, what my life might be like this way. Getting in some things I've enjoyed at this size in case I won't be able to, able to in the future. Gavin stuffed the last of his toast in his mouth before answering. You want another tea bath? Nah, I wouldn't have enough time to enjoy it by the time we leave. But I wouldn't mind taking you up on another brushing. It might be nice to have one that's from that's just for fun instead of bringing me down from some mania. Oh, sure. You want to be on the bed or desk or anything? Whatever's easiest for you. Let's just do it here then. Let me get then let me get more comfortable. I pull my arms to the sleeves of my dress and lift it over my head. I drop it on the counter like a discarded cocoon. Gavin looks as excited by the idea as me. I hold up my wrist as I'm about to be escorted down like I'm about to be escorted down a grand staircase. Is there a gentleman who could help me? Of course, mistress! He lowers his arm on the counter. Oh. We resume our positions from before, me resting on his forearm as he picks up my doll brush and starts his first stroke along my back. Neef. He jerks his hand back. Oh, was that? No, it was great! Sorry, I didn't think I'd react so strongly for the first one. Keep going, please. He hesitates a moment, but dutifully returns to running the bristles through my fur. Looks like an L. Water time. Ah, ha, ha. Even with the knowledge of how good it can feel, I still can't stop myself from sighing at the sensation. It's like dozens of individual fingers stroking beneath my fur to my skin. I didn't feel like my fur was tangled or anything, but as the brush smooths and tidies every last strand, I find an order I didn't know was missing. Press a little harder. Gavin manages to perfectly throttle his massive strength to push just the right amount more. Like that? Perfect, thank you. The increased pressure allows me to lean in onto him even more. The hair on his arm mingles with my fur, and I feel the beat of his heart through his arteries even better. I press my cheek to his arm and nuzzle. His heart speeds up a little. He's sure with his strokes this, this time and less cautious about avoiding parts of me. Not to mention my nudity lets him brush all across the canvas of my back. The strokes follow the curves of my body from shoulder to waist to thigh, and leave orderly creases that are undone on subsequent paths. I sigh more as the calming, nourishing motion soothe every inch the brush touches. Not that I have many inches to speak of. When he reaches my spine, he drags the brush down until it meets my tail. He lifts the brush away and puts his fingers to work instead. He gently pinches my tail between his thumb and index finger and caresses down its length. I feel a few jolts pop as he massages it from base to tip. I flick it upward once his fingers are clear. Hmm, <laughs> you must be a big pervert to want to do that. He's already stroking my back again before I finish speaking. I figured all the Humiliation King play would have been a better clue. Good, then I guess you won't mind me doing this. My tongue extends from my mouth and I lick his arm. It's the mellow, pleasant taste of a man who just slept through a cold night after an evening of passion. There's a little musk or pecan astringency, but a gentle, mature taste. It won't be the last time I'll be able to put my lips to his skin and taste him, as long as we remain a couple, but it might be the last time I have the chance with these heightened senses. That's reason enough to lick the taste of salt and cotton sheets off of him. Is that good for you, mistress? It is, yeah. I don't know if I prefer the taste of your... Uh, but it has its place. I straighten out the arm... Out the hair on his arm as I find a new patch to lick. Good. I was starting to believe last night was just a humor. Was just a humor me. He ends a pass on the outside of my curves and a sharp pat on my ass. I grin and laugh through my nose. <laughs> was that all of my back? Yep. Unless you'd like another pass. No, that'll be all for the brushing for now. Thank you. 
There's just one last request. I give him a few seconds to imagine whatever depraved appeal I might have concocted. What's that? We've never kissed. He looks genuinely taken aback. Oh! Uh, I guess we haven't. Could you give your girlfriend a kiss, then? He smiles. I'd love to! I stand up and he removes his arm before cupping his hands for me to kneel on. Slowly he brings me to his eye level. Oh! <sniffs> Gavin's kind. Gavin's kind, grateful face takes up my whole field of vision. He tan he tempers his breath as to not as to not disturb as to not disturb me while he admires my body. Dang it! Dang it! He's gonna make me blush. Somehow, after these last few nights of domination, bossing him around, I feel small and protected. Crap! I shouldn't have sat like this. I'm all coquettish and cute. I draw my closed knees and ankles and tighter as my tail curls around his fingers, but that just intensifies the effect. My shoulders hunch up as I and I turn away a bit. His eyes only get kinder. Well, are you gonna do what I asked or not? Of course! I can feel the bass of his voice shake his palms underneath me. With deliberate, gracious speed, he leans forward as he draws me toward his mouth. His eyes stay open and alert until he's until just near me. I lean my cheek out, and the two massive warm pillows of his lips touch me. They're big enough to caress my cheek, neck, shoulder, and ear all at once as I lean into the warm cushions. Between the beat of his heart and the faint tremble of his hands, I feel a dull, muffled movement in his body as he tries so hard to keep still. It's not the first time I've felt his lips on my skin, but it's more intimate than our last two nights of passion. A comforting embrace instead of a driving force. The tea I'd prepared for him is on his breath. I lean into his kiss, surely tickling him with my whiskers. He doesn't budge a bit. Hmm, you have soft lips for a guy. He can't talk without ruining the moment, so he simply puckers a little more. I turn to kiss him myself. Never thought I'd have to, I'd have to with my current face, but I'm able to, with, but I'm able to draw my lips together across my snout and plant them on his. Second, y'all. It is water time. Hopefully he doesn't mind getting just as much of my nose in the deal. We stay there for a few moments as we taste each other. I could stay like I could stay forever in this moment. But he pulls away and opens his eyes. We gaze at each other for a few more moments. Was that a good first kiss? Definitely. It'd probably be hard to explain it to people if they ever ask, though. He chuckles. His chuckle shakes the ground underneath me. Yeah, it probably would. Gavin takes me to a bakery on the way to the store like he promised. He orders a croissant for the two of us and peels layers off to hand to me in, the, in, his, bre in his breast pocket. I'd never been to this place before. The croissant, this croissant is amazing. Hopefully it'll be just as good when I'm normal again. I'll have to treat you then to make sure. I can't imagine the bakery will smell as good, unfortunately. How was it compared to the shop? Mm, different at least. There was definitely more to smell, like a larger volume. There was so much of that buttery baked good smell that saturated... Ooh, that saturated the air. But I think the shop's still better. There's more types of smells and they're all more complex. Plus, I like tea more than pastries. I take a bite of the sheet of flaky bread I'm holding. This croissant's making a decent case, though. We reach the store and he unlocks the entrance. We've gotten so good at transferring me to the counter that it feels as natural as stepping off an elevator. So, what's the plan? Well, I figured we'd wait for Julie to show up before we make any plans. Wanna I text her to ask when she expects to be done? Nah, I'm just gonna give her some space. I don't know how long it's gonna take her, and I don't want to rush her. Plus, well, it's not like she's the kind to skip shifts, but I don't think she's in the habit of showing up early to what. A rapping on the front door makes me jump. I'm afraid a customer looked inside and caught a glimpse of me. Instead, I see Julie smiling and waving. She's here ten minutes before the store opens. Ah! Gavin paces over to the door to let her in. She doesn't wait for him to accompany her back to the counter. Hey, Mags! Gavin's still treating you right? Of course! He's not doing any weird dollhouse shit with you. Nope, we just had a pleasant evening together. Gavin returns, and I can see a twinge of concern that I'll be more that I'll be more specific. I give him a sly grin to imply that I could if I wanted. Julie looks chagrined. Not even setting up a tea party with all this with all this all his mouse dolls that he already owns for some reason. Sorry to disappoint you, man. What am I gonna give him a hard time for now? I'm sure you'll find something. So, were you able to translate it? Yep, that took a bit of doing, but I'm pretty confident. I have the whole thing figured out. So, does it have a method for turning back? Well, you two were on the right track. You are supposed to meditate to get back to normal. Gavin claps and affords himself a fist pump. Knew it! See, you're doing just fine. I mean, nearly everything else was sort of off. Doesn't matter, got the important part. Julie rolls her eyes. Do you want me to explain how the tea works, or do you want to trust this Jagoff's half-done translation? Nope, let us know what you figured out. You've worked hard on it. She appreciates my gratitude. Okay, so first of all, I'm pretty sure the tea isn't meant to isn't meant to have done well this. 
The amounts they talk about are way less than what you drank, and there's nothing about turning into a tiny mouse. In fact, there's nothing about mice on the label at all. It's just supposed to be beast or animal tea. I've got a feeling different people turn into different animals when they drink it. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.